Welcome back to the Oxidation Reduction Playlist on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right. In the previous video, we actually talked about basics of carbonyl reduction or CO bond reduction, and then we did an, we did a little bit with sodium borohydride. We mentioned that the sodium borohydride is a weak reducing agent. So sodium borohydride NaBH4 was only able to reduce ketones and aldehydes into their respective alcohols. This is another look at the picture right here. So out of some of the some of the uh, carbonyl uh, containing compounds, we see that only ketones and aldehydes are able to be reduced by sodium borohydride. In fact, out of the two, we see that aldehydes are a little bit easier to reduce than ketones, but sodium borohydride is able to reduce both of those. However, what if we want to reduce a carboxylic acid, or we want to reduce an ester, or in some cases an amide? We cannot use sodium borohydride. In other words, if I have a predict the products kind of question, and you see an ester or a carboxylic acid, and the reagents are sodium borohydride, there is no reaction. Sodium borohydride only works on ketones and aldehydes. So if I want to have any other reactions with some of the more stable uh, carbonyl-containing compounds like acids and esters, I need to use a stronger reducing agent, and the reagent of choice is lithium aluminum hydride. And this video is going to be dedicated to LiAlH4, and sometimes, because that's kind of a tongue twister to say, I think I actually screwed it up a little in the last video, um, we just call it LAH. Okay? It's really hard sometimes to say LIALH4, so we just say LAH, lithium aluminum hydride, LAH. And this is a very powerful and strong reducing agent. Pretty much any of the functional groups that we've seen so far, it will reduce. Now, notice here for the first two, aldehydes and ketones. We know sodium borohydride will reduce these into their corresponding alcohols. Specifically, aldehydes will be reduced by sodium borohydride into primary alcohols, and ketones will be reduced by sodium borohydride into secondary alcohols. However, aldehydes and ketones, like the others, will still be reduced by lithium aluminum hydride into the same products. However, for aldehydes and ketones, generally sodium borohydride is preferred because lithium aluminum hydride um, can be very dangerous if you don't use it properly and sometimes can explode. So if you can use sodium borohydride, it's actually preferred. However, if we have any of these other functional groups, and certainly there are others like thioesters and so forth, we have to use lithium aluminum hydride. Okay? Now, out of these three right here, two of them kind of do this, uh, the same thing. Okay? Um, if we have a carboxylic acid, we use lithium aluminum hydride, uh, this carbon atom just has a simple OH group attached, okay? It becomes its primary alcohol. We'll look at examples of that on the black screen after we finish talking about the theory. Um, if we deal with esters, it's a little bit more complicated. We have to basically think, and we'll, we'll look at strategies for esters um, when we get there in a few minutes. But when we use lithium aluminum hydride, we actually get two alcohols. One of them is basically from this carbon. So this alcohol right here on the left, um, that's coming from this RC, and then this C will have an OH attached right here instead of a carbon-oxygen double bond. Then this OR, we basically imagine, and we'll talk about strategies for this. I'll make it easy um, in a minute. But we'll basically clip this bond right here and then just put a hydrogen on that oxygen. So we'll have R prime OH, R prime OH. So when we have esters and we use LAH, we're going to get two alcohols. But the point is we get alcohols. Two for esters, one for carboxylic acids. It's a little bit different. When we do this with an amide, you really have to think about this. And this is kind of something you just have to remember. It's easily forgotten. When you have an amide and you use lithium aluminum hydride, you actually don't get an alcohol. You actually get an amine. Notice that instead of having an RCOH, we have an RC and then we have this NH2. So we actually get an amine instead of an alcohol. So unless you are specifically, uh, if you, unless you just desire an amine in your synthesis, generally when you're making alcohols, you just avoid amides. Um, the other functional groups, which tend to be aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, and esters, if you want alcohols, those are the ones you typically want to go from. Amides, if you use lithium aluminum hydride, you'll get an amine instead. Okay? So... 
We'll get some more practice with these now. We're gonna to go to the black screen and then hopefully you'll get a grasp on lithium, lithium aluminum hydride. All right, now that we hopefully have seen the theory behind lithium aluminum hydride, or LIH, which is our strong reducing agent, um, let's go into some practical problems where we look at some predict the product type of questions, okay, and hopefully get a better understanding of lithium aluminum hydride. All right, before we actually go into this, I want to show you um, sort of what lithium aluminum hydride actually does on a mechanistic level. Okay, so let's look at a very simple example. Let's look at the example of an aldehyde, and we're gonna reduce that aldehyde into uh, primary alcohol. So in lithium aluminum hydride, there's two components. There's the lithium cation, which plays no role in the reaction. It's just a counter ion or a spectator ion. The functional part is this aluminum, which has four hydrides that, are, that surround it. And that causes the aluminum central atom to have a negative charge. Aluminum is a metal, it's a small metal, but it hates to have a negative charge. So the way it alleviates that negative charge is by ejecting one of these hydrides out and it will attack some molecule such as this aldehyde right here. So um, in the reduction, basically what happens is this hydride essentially just leaves and it attacks the, the carbon of uh, the carbonyl containing compound, at least the carbonyl group, and that causes these electrons to come up onto that oxygen. Initially, what you're going to generate is you'll have that hydride right here. In fact, this hydride, the one that's ejected, is this one right here. And you'll initially have an oxygen with a negative charge. In a workup step, that negatively charged oxygen will pick up a proton from somewhere in the solution, and it will become the alcohol like this. Okay. If we replace this aluminum with boron, that would be borohydride, and it essentially works the same way. Um, boron can stabilize this negative charge a little bit better, which is part of the reason why borohydride is a weaker reducing agent. This hydride is more easily ejected from the aluminum, which makes is part of what makes the aluminum hydride a stronger reducing agent. Anyways, now that we've seen that, let's actually go into some practice problems. All right. So, what does lithium aluminum hydride, or LAH, what is it able to reduce? Well, in addition to reducing the things that borohydride was able to do, as in ketones and aldehydes, it's pretty much able to reduce everything else. And honestly, for some of the compounds here at the top, the first three, the, the predicting the products is a little easier. Um, we're actually going to look at some strategies for the last two, which are esters and amides. Anyways, let's get into it. So. This first compound, this is a ketone. Here's the carbon-oxygen double bond that's going to be reduced. When we use LAH, we're going to essentially just take that carbon-oxygen double bond and it's going to be reduced into a simple OH. Um, we could have also accomplished this transformation with sodium borohydride because sodium borohydride is able to reduce both ketones and aldehydes. Okay, LAH can do that and it can reduce more. Okay. Second compound, we have here an aldehyde. We have our simple carbon-oxygen double bond. We know LAH is going to reduce that simply into an OH. Okay, you would also possibly see this compound written like this. Okay, as you know, I tend to like to keep the functional groups in the same orientation, so it makes it a little bit easier to see. After you draw this, you can always rotate it so it looks like this. Okay, all right. LAH now is going to react with a carboxylic acid, okay? Now, sodium borohydride could not do this reaction because as we know, sodium borohydride can only react with ketones and aldehydes. In fact, I should indicate this one, this aldehyde reduction can also be accomplished through sodium borohydride, okay? However, LAH is able to reduce carboxylic acids, and they are just simply reduced into their corresponding alcohol. So how many carbons? We have one, two, three, four. So we have a four carbon alcohol. One, two, three, four, and then here is our OH. Okay? Now, when we want to reduce esters and aldehydes, we have to do a little bit more strategy. So here's the way I want you to essentially think of these, okay? So let me actually... This is not the product, but I'm going to redraw the ester over here, okay? 
So I'm going to redraw the ester. So this is actually, the way you would name this is because this is an ethyl group over here, and this part on the left is acetate. This would be ethyl acetate, okay? The way you can sort of think about the products of um, lithium aluminum hydride reduction on an ester is the bond here between the carbonyl carbon and this oxygen, we're going to think of splitting it just like that, okay? Then all of this business, we're just going to throw a hydrogen on that. So one product would just be this. You can see here, here's one carbon, two carbons, and then the O with the H. One carbon, two carbons, and here's the OH. On the left side of it, the acetate, the same thing we can think about this carbon-oxygen double bond is going to be reduced to an alcohol. So we would get this. This will work. There we go. So those are our two products of this ester um, reduction by LAH. Okay. Um, when you use LAH, it's one of our stronger reducing agents, so you cannot isolate intermediates when you do LAH reduction on esters. So you will automatically get two alcohols with whenever you reduce esters. So like I said, we're going to split that bond right down the middle. Then whatever is on the right side, we just or at least whatever is on this side with the oxygen, we're going to throw a hydrogen on there, so it'll be HO, and then we have our two carbons. On the left side, we just reduce this carbon-oxygen double bond into an alcohol, and those are our two products, okay? We'll do a couple more examples with esters at the very end, okay? Now, amides are very different, okay? All the other examples that we've seen, ketones, aldehydes, carboxylic acids, and esters, we when we do LAH, we get alcohols. When we do lithium aluminum hydride reduction on amides, we actually get um, some kind of amine. The way you can more or less think about what kind of amine you get is basically just take, take this, this carbon-oxygen double bond right here. Just think of basically removing, just think of basically removing that um, double bond oxygen. In other words, what you're gonna get is just this nothing on the nitrogen changes. So you get whatever that is, okay? You just imagine completely clipping off that oxygen. The double bond's gone. Imagine completely clipping off that oxygen, and then that's what you have. That's your product of amide reduction by LAH, okay? In fact, we can even go to the PowerPoint and take a look at some of those things. This was our picture for LAH. Notice that when we do this for amides, we only end up with the corresponding amine. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint and let's do a few more examples with the ones that are more complicated, such as carboxyls, esters, and amides. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this, our demonstration of the mechanism. All right, so let's suppose I have a compound like this. Let's say I have, I'm going to use benzoic acid. So here's my benzoic acid, and I'm going to reduce this with LAH, lithium aluminum hydride. All right, so what are my products going to be? Well, I have my functional group right here. This is a carboxylic acid, so I know all that I do is basically convert that into its corresponding primary alcohol. Just like in the case of amides, you can actually sort of think of it as just clipping off that double bonded oxygen. Imagine just clipping that off and you have the corresponding primary alcohol, okay? This would be the product of benzoic acid reduction by LAH. Again, you could not accomplish this with sodium borohydride because NABH4 only deals with ketones and aldehydes. All right, let's do another example with an ester. Suppose I have an ester that looks like this. Let's do a slightly more complicated ester. So let's say I have an ester that looks like this. Okay, I don't even want to attempt to name that right now. That's not the point, but we're going to reduce that with LAH. So how did we deal with uh, reducing esters? We're going to imagine splitting this bond right here. Everything on the oxygen side, you're just going to throw a hydrogen on there. So if we do all this stuff in this color, we would end up with this compound. The side with the oxygen, all we do is throw a hydrogen on it. 
the side with the carbonyl, we just emit, which is, I'm going to do that in, let's do that in green, all this stuff. I'm just going to take that carbon oxygen double bond and reduce it to an alcohol, primary alcohol. So that product would look like this. Like that. So this, let me do it in light blue, this carbon oxygen double bond is now reduced to a simple alcohol. Okay? And so that's how you deal with lithium aluminum hydride uh, reduction of esters. Let's do another example of an amide reduction. Um, let's suppose I have something that looks like this. Let's say here is my amide. It is a secondary amide because the nitrogen has two groups on it, okay, two carbon groups. So let's predict the product if we use lithium aluminum hydride reduction on this. All right, what products would we get? Well, remember when we do lithium aluminum hydride reduction of amides, we just sort of imagine clipping off this double bonded oxygen. Imagine clipping that off and all we're left with is basically the carbon skeleton plus that nitrogen, okay? And that would be the product of lithium aluminum, aluminum hydride reduction of amides, okay? So hopefully this gave you a little bit of sense of how we deal with lithium aluminum hydride. Um, it can be a little bit more complicated than sodium borohydride since with that all we have to deal with is ketones and aldehydes. But I think if you take this sort of strategic approach to predicting these products, it'll actually help you a lot in the long run, okay, when you have an exam and so forth. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like it and subscribe. In the next video, we're actually going to cover, uh, we're going to do some syntheses and practice problems, and we're going to mix them between sodium borohydride and lith lithium aluminum hydride, sort of like we did in the oxidation videos. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next video.